Hi everybody, hope you're well, enjoying your Sunday afternoon. Um, I thought I'd do a video about failed attempts, not just uh, all positive stuff, not always the upside when you're dealing with deals, but also talking about some of the deals that I've lost uh, and the reasons. And I think it's worth running through those things because although I lost the deals, some of them I'll pick back up and a lot of them it's about the process and I suppose it gives you a better idea of what we're trying to do, how we work with our clients, some of the things that could go wrong in deals uh, and I think you know it's, it's actually useful rather than just saying I did this, I did that, I did this, we're so great to talk about some of the um, you know frailties of dealing with uh, as a mortgage broker and, and some of the issues that we come across on a daily basis so although we lost some of these deals uh, we did many many more and, and and that's the way of life really so you win some you lose some and hopefully some of those that we lost will come back thank you so much niche advice is authorized and regulated by the financial conduct authority Hi, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Right, I thought I'd talk about some of the things that other brokers and other channels are not really talking about, and it's losing deals, not actually winning deals and making lots of money and becoming millionaires and all sorts of things, but why someone like myself could possibly lose some deals. And let's go through some of the deals that I lost in the last 30 days um, and talk about some of the scenarios to give you an insight of what a broker does and some of the reasons why deals can go wrong, um, whether it's down to me, whether it's down to the client's needs, whether it's down to valuations and other circumstances out of our control. But uh, let's go through it because I think it gives you a good insight about what we do, how we work, and, and some of the issues that we come across on a daily basis. So these are all cases that I've worked on in the last 30 days. Number one case, I had a first time buyer come to me for a 90% loan to value deal. Now. I've done videos on this in the past. I'm not. I'm in certainly in the in this pandemic, sort of pre-pandemic or after pandemic. Um, I'm not a big fan of high loan to value lending, um, especially for first time buyers and people looking to get into the property, um, because I just think um, the deals are not that good because there's not much choice out there. Uh, I think if you can, you should wait. Um, because I think there will probably be better deals out there if you're looking at that, that type of margin um, coming for you know in the next few months. I also believe 95% 90% loan to value deals are not very good. I just don't think they're great value. You know you're looking around about two and a half to three percent rate depending on whether you go on a two year or a five year. There are lenders out there. There's few. There's four or five maybe lenders that I'm aware of, but they're not great products. You know if you look at a 15% deposit product. Um, you're getting under 2%, you know, 1.7, 1.8, something like that. So um, because of that, I'm not really uh, into it. I'm also hearing a lot around down valuations with high loan to value lendings. So, you know, you might have your heart set on 90% loan to value. The value goes there and values it and down values it. Then there's a new argument between yourself, the state agents and the vendor of, you know, what, what should happen. So um, there are potential problems there. Never, never mind. I had a client come to me. His issue was it wasn't just 90% lending. He also wanted to get up to five times income. So a lot of that 90% lending that's done, what happens is um, the affordability is reduced a little bit because of the perceived risk by the lenders. So you're not borrowing as much. They're not le letting you borrow as much. And also, very importantly, the credit scores are tightened up. So you need to have a very pristine credit score or credit profile to be able to get a 90% deal now. But it wasn't necessarily the case maybe four or five months ago. But um, anyway, so the, this client specifically wanted a 90% uh, on five times his income. Um, we managed to find him a lender um, and got them getting the quote he was absolutely happy and he knows who he is because these are live cases they're on my database so i don't know if they do if they do want to they can make a comment uh, below um quoted him and guess what the lender pulled out of the market so they pulled that product so that 90 percent deal um pulled out of the market i'll tell you who the lender was it was a core the mortgages they had a 90 percent deal um, and unfortunately they withdrew that product because they're just getting too much business because the big boys are not, most of the big guys, lenders, um, are not uh, in that sector. I know Nationwide came out yesterday with a product um, on a, at 
it is quite specific. Again, credit score is going to be harsh. Uh, no new builds. So that there are some restrictions around it. But anyway, we lost the deal simply because the lender is no longer there at 90%. They'll probably reprice. They've done this before. They pulled out of the market a few weeks ago, repriced with the product, uh, and then they've, they've taken too much out and they've probably come back repricing it. But our specific need was five times income as or up to five times income as well as the 90%. Um, and I don't think many of the others are doing that at the moment. Um, so we lost that deal. Got a very similar, similar situation, 90% deal from, from another client of mine, um, or was going to be a client of mine. Um, and um, managed to manage to uh, said to me that time look do you know what I think I'm going to stay with my existing lender because I quoted him essentially the existing lender so um lost that deal so uh, another example so these are the first time why guys let's get to the more uh, trickier question I had a chap bought a property in auction uh, no, sorry, I don't think he bought it on auction. I think we just got the properties on bridging finance. Experienced landlord used the bridging lender many a times. Has got a number of white letters already. Very experienced. Very knew what he wanted. But basically, came to me and said, "Look, you know, um, I have got a problem whereby I'm in, I'm not quite sure whether I should sell these properties or whether I'm going to keep them as white lets. Um, but my preferred option is probably sell them. However, um, I want a backup plan." I don't want to be sitting on this bridge. It's expensive, uh, and I really I've, I've bought these properties. I've done heavy refurbishment on them. I'm talking about double extensions, full full renovations in and out. So in those sort of type of scenarios, we can actually um, refinance and pull the whole money out. Whereas in a lot of other scenarios, you know, they've just done a lick of paint and then they want to up market value or you know bought it for 100 now it's worth 150 because you spent five grand on it doesn't work like that it's got to be quite extensive work for you to be able to or you know turned it from a one bed flat to a two bed flat or turn it into a normal house from a you know three bedroom to maybe a uh, hmo with a number of other bedrooms those type of scenarios we can actually pull some money out so anyway i found them a problem oh his main issue was he wanted a no early repayment charge type of product now in the past he'd use a lender called a kent reliance kent reliance unfortunately at the moment are not uh, they, they've withdrawn that specific product that did, didn't have um, an early repayment charge. So which meant he could sell the property whenever he wanted to, maybe put the tenant in there for a year, and then that would give him some time to get himself sorted out and maybe sell the property on. Um, so I actually did find him a, prop, um, uh, a, a, a lender with no early repayment charge, um, but unfortunately the rental calculations didn't, uh, on one of the properties it did, so the one of the properties we could have refinanced, on the second property the rental calculation, what, the, what he was going to get on rent and what he was going to get on the loan uh, after they paid the bridging finance and everybody off, just didn't stack up. And he said to me, Pyam, do you know what? I'm just probably going to stick it on bridge and I'll probably put it up for sale. It's not worth me going in with this product and paying all the fees and bits and pieces um, and I'm not getting the money that out that I wanted to. I know I can do it on the other one, but I'll probably put both of them up for sale. And it was a, it was a bit of a weird sort of ending, I think, to it because we, we basically could have done one of the deals for him. But um, for whatever reason, whether he just wanted to know who the lender was, maybe, uh, and maybe pass it on to his broker, I don't know. But uh, we lost that deal. Um, uh, another one that I, I lost was a, uh, this is actually quite, quite. Um, uh, it was an interesting one. It was a, a, a I think it's about 12, 12 and a half million pound portfolio in London, uh, consists of, uh, you know, blocks of flats. Um, the client owned the whole thing. Um, I was at 12 and a half million. I think he had a one and a half million uh, finance with his existing lender. Now this guy was very experienced. When I talk very experienced, he got into white lead when I was born. Okay, so you know he knew his stuff, uh, and he's you know he's got 12 and a half million pound portfolio. Just just on that portfolio, he's got other assets there, um, and he wanted to refinance it because his existing lender basically uh, is, is pulling out of the market or is closing down that division and they give him some time to get a new product so he was actually with his existing lender for 25 odd years so you know he's a very good client always you know very good uh, income expenditure pro pro uh, profile very very good just wanted a really good on a commercial basis commercial finance um after the interviews we did sort of you know 
video conferencing and we got his portfolios and we got everything sorted out we got the terms agreed by the new lender um, and the lender was ready to sort of go for the full application and lo and behold his existing lender came back and said do you know what we'll give you an extra year we'll give you an extra year to get out now he was on a very very com very low rate anyway because he got his finance so many years ago and he's currently abroad so he's not in the uk so he just said look Prime, you know with all this pandemic stuff I might as well take the year extension. It'll save me about 10 grand anyway, simply because of the the, the terms that I've got. Um, I will come back. This is just kicking it down the right line. But I'm, you know, at the moment, and I said, you know what, that's fair enough. You know, he's been given a, an opportunity where they can extend for a year and get his stuff in order. He can probably, by the time he comes back to the UK, um, we can then look to refinance him. So at that time, however, I am doing a couple of other deals for him. Uh, 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 not related to this specific deal. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. He will come back, hopefully. We are doing some other business with him. So, but you know, that, that gives you an idea of, you know, you can work and you could do lots of work and have a couple of weeks worth of work, paperwork, documentation, you know, uh, in, um, interview with the lender, you know, first call with the lender, mutual uh, calls, all of that. And it just says, you know, the existing lender come back and say, you know, will make an exception for you because they wanted to keep him because he's a very good client at the end of the day i think the finance he was after was i think two and a half million on 12 and a half so it's pretty much you know uh, it, it was a very good deal for the lenders specifically um so that's that's one another one that i lost actually and now this one is down to me um i lost the deal the lady um again experienced um bought a property which was a low value property so under 100k if i can remember and she wanted to get uh finance bridging finance to buy it at 70 percent loan to value because the property needed extensive work moving to it she then wanted to fund 100 percent of the work the lender to fund 100 percent of work so she wanted 70 percent to buy it and then the lender to buy to fund 100% of the works. So I sort of dug around, and the lender that I found for him for her gave 65%. So six, so she had to put 35% down, and that's 65% gross. Um, offered 65% gross and 100% of the works. Now, everything's to do when it comes to bridging finance is to do with the value of the property because. If you're going to buy a lower value property, generally the lender's rates are higher and the loan to values are lower. If you're going to buy a more expensive property, generally the lenders will lend, you know, 70, 75 percent loan to value. Um, and obviously the rates are a lot more keener. So in her uh, scenario, I went back with a 65 percent product um, and 100 percent and, and, and a breakdown of what they will lend on 100 percent of the works to be carried out so which i thought was a very good deal lo and behold she came back and said you know what i am i was before i made an inquiry with you i actually spoke to another broker and that broker has come back and said that they could do this instead of 65 percent on 70 percent of the uh, of the loan to value with a hundred percent of the works um the rate was a little bit more expensive but obviously she got what she wanted or then I said, okay, what was the lender's name? It would be good for me to know if someone else, and she, obviously the lender, the broker had not given any details. So in terms of who the lender was, what other fees, structures and stuff. So it was a bit up in the air. Um, so I said, okay, well fine, if that's the case. But she said, definitely I'm coming back to you for the refinance and I've got another one that I want to refinance with you anyway. So we'll, we'll end up, I said, no problem. You can come back to us and refinance. Obviously they've offered you something that I cannot. At the moment, I can only give you 65% of the purchase price because it's a low value properties. Um, and we've left it as that, you know, I think hope she's going to come back to us on a buy to let. Um, I don't know whether the, the, the broker had given the details, the full details of the work. Funny enough, uh, I was speaking to a bridging lender only, I think, the day before yesterday. And I told them about this deal and they said, you know what, Priam, because she was experienced and because of what she was doing, we probably could do 70% uh loan to value and we would have funded 100 percent. so i've got a feeling i know who the lender is um so you always got to learn um but um you know it's not all is not lost we'll 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 pick up the buy to let business hopefully off of that and she was very very nice and do you know what what i liked was she was honest up front didn't mess anybody around told me what she wanted and and that's the way hopefully we can deal with a lot of our clients because a lot of clients that i get just 
you know, sometimes they, you know, they're rate chasing or they're deal chasing for the wrong reasons. And and you know what, we're not in that, we're not, we're not in that business. But she was actually right. So let's hope, let's hope she's found that deal, and let's hope that we can uh, do the buy to let refinance off the back of that. Um, another deal that we lost, and these are all in the last thirty days. So I've lost a few. Another deal that we lost was a chap who owned multiple businesses. The problem with him was is he was not drawing down any income out of those businesses. Although the businesses were making money, um, he wasn't drawing out. And also, the, the income profile of the businesses were a bit up and down. So one year he'd make a lot of money, another year he would not make as much money. I think it was to do with a lot of property-related um, businesses. Okay, So he wanted a lender that would work do a remortgage i think it was 1.2 million and he wanted 550 on a remortgage um he wanted a lender that will be able to work off the net profit of the business so not what he's drawing out of the business but what are the business making and also needed to do it for multiple businesses okay so um we actually found a lender and uh, we found a five-year deal on a residential mortgage with no early repayment charges, which was just fantastic, really. And it was pretty decent. All right, high street rate. Um, went in, went to the underwriters, and initially they look at the case and go, well, we don't like this. It's over half a million. He's got several businesses. It's related to this, that, the other. Rejected it. And then we said, fine. We went back. Uh, war and peace in regards to why this client is a suitable client. And you know what, lo and behold, the underwriter said, do you know what, that makes sense now, uh, we'll accept it. So the, they got the agreement in principle, got accepted. In the meantime, because he thought he was rejected, he sort of approached his existing bank and the existing bank said, do you know what, we could probably do this. Um, however, it's well outside their policy, so I'm not sure whether they can because his existing bank, their policy is salary plus dividends. Okay, so they only work from salary plus dividends. They don't work from net profit. So whether they've made an exception, whether they've just blagged him and said we can do the deal and maybe turn it down, he sent me an email, lo and behold, upfront guy said, Pam, do you know what? This has happened in the meantime. I'm going to explore that option. And if it doesn't work, I'll come back to you. Fair enough. So that's where, uh, that's what, what happened with that deal. Now, a couple of other deals that we lost are down to purely uh, third party issues. And that is um, valuations. So had a deal for a lady pre-pandemic, got it agreed. Um, the lender was Nat West on that one. It was an ex-local authority property uh, with a gifted equity. So her sister was going to sell her property to her um, and they were going to use the uh, the, the the discount, I suppose, as the deposit for her. So it's called the gifted equity buy to let. It was going to be her first buy to let. Um, so we actually got the case agreed before the lockdown, but unfortunately, because it was an ex-local authority, deck access, you know, the old um, ex-local authority properties in London, um, the, the lender insisted, NatWest insisted that the value had to go around. Obviously, the value has stopped going around, and so everything was put on hold. So she had to basically wait two and a half months, and then the valuers went there. And I was a bit of back and forth around the valuers, and I was a, it was a messy case around the valuation and getting booked in. But anyway, we managed to get it booked in, and lo and behold, they came around and they said, you know what, we don't like the block, and we don't think it's mortgageable, we're not gonna do it, it doesn't fit their policy. So um, we lost that deal. In the midst of all of this, she'd actually got some tax advice, and she then wanted to explore options of um, limited company, do it on a limited company. But I didn't think that was a viable option right now in this climate, especially of lenders that declined the block, they didn't like the block, gifted equity, first time landlords, all of that stuff. So I think I sort of told her that I don't think we can do the deal, and I think she's got to explore her own, her own options. So we lost that deal, mainly to do with the valuations. And we lost a couple of other deals to do with valuations. Um, obviously down valuations, well, a number of down valuations happen. We've managed to do some of the deals still, maybe a higher loan to value on the deals, but down valuations has been a problem. Um, some desktop valuations, funny enough, have actually come out higher than what we thought. Some of them have absolutely crucified them. So down valuations have been problems. Uh, one, uh, one deal that we lost and we've managed to replace, uh, so refinance the deal, so we didn't quite lose it, was a it had a commercial unit underneath it. Lenders didn't like the commercial element of it. So 
and has declined it and we managed to get get it done um another lender funny enough that we did actually do and i'm going to give you a bit of positive news is, and this is all about doom and gloom this video so i don't want to give any positives but we managed to get one done next to a cafe which was an absolute pain to do um, but we managed to get that one done on a buy to let basis um and we managed to get one done next to a pub as well which is really hard on a buy to let basis and we got that done um but yeah so we, but that specific one i think we lost um any other deals that we we lost on yeah a few few remortgages simply because the properties the value to what what the clients wanted um but yeah to give you an idea i mean this gives you an idea of what we're dealing with some of the clients that we're dealing with um you know sometimes you gel with people sometimes you lose them just some, just simply because you don't gel with that client and the client doesn't get a great vibe out of you and you know they may get a quote of you they may go with this same lender the same fee structure with another with another broker simply because you don't you don't gel and, and that happens you know sometimes it happens okay so everything's relative about what your needs are and what you think is perceived value um and, and short-term uh, value and long-term value and unfortunately um we're in a we're in a uh, world right now where short term is always seen as the best value and, and and i don't think that's necessarily true so be mindful you know uh, about who you're dealing with what you're dealing with and um yeah hopefully this gives you a bit of an insight on how we work with clients and sometimes how we lose clients take care The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker before applying. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up your repayments.